Hey there, in this video we're looking at making predictions by interpolation and extrapolation. Again, this is a complex skill because there's a couple of things involved with this, but if you, um, it's probably one of the easier complex skills to master because you're just reading off a graph and you're doing substitution, two things that we have covered quite extensively here in this subject. So let's have a look at um, interpolation or interpolation. So interpolation is when we have a scatter graph and we put our line of best fit on, as long as we work within the first and the, like the lowest point and the highest point, we are in interpolation. And it's normally, that's where we want to work because like the line that we have represents the data we've, um, that's been given to us, the original data set. If we extrapolate, we can go um, below the last point or above the highest point. And that's when you make um, predictions outside of the graph. So here we go. If we have a look at this um, graph here, my thing has choked. If this is working, oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, sorry. If you see this graph here, you can see that it's test scores of physics and mathematics. So if, say, we can make a prediction, if I got 50 on my mathematics exam, it might mean that I'm going to estimate and get. Uh, 45 on my physics exam. So that's what we mean by making predictions. If I was like wanting to get a hundred per, like percent or a hundred on my exam, I would come out here and then make my prediction based on that for physics. So when we use graphs, we're just going to read the values off the x axis. So you, if you were to consider like our bus fare and distance scatter plot that was done in another video, use this graph to estimate how far, like the fare of the journey for five kilometers. So if we have a look here, five kilometers is along the X axis. I'm going to just use a green pen to help me identify that. So I would just draw up a line and read it off the graph. Excuse that, it's not straight. I'm just going to move it over if I can. Yeah, sometimes this is a bit fickle. It's only just because of how it, um, the software. So there's my line and then I can also draw another one from here onwards and then make that interpretation. So then I would read the number. So if this is three and four, it's not quite half, it's like maybe 3.75. So it's probably not the straightest. So how much would it cost? It would then cost approximately. That's what we're doing. We're making estimates or predictions. We're not actually calculating. We're using that information. It's going to be about $3.00. 75. Now how far could you travel on $3.25? So again, you would then take your, it's not quite half, it's a bit of a quarter of the way. Oops, I just realized that I made a straight line. Draw your line out to your line of best fit. And then I can see that it's intercepting here on one of these nice convenient grid lines. But just to be sure, well, yet yeah, see it drawn poorly again for me. I can't move it over anymore. Uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. But if you have a look here, it's a bit hard, but you can see that it is um, on the four here. So a three dollar twenty-five ride is going to probably get you about four kilometers. Ooh, that would help to write the number, wouldn't it? Four kilometers. So that's how we do graphical um, interpretations using your line of best fit or interpolations. So here we go. Here's a line of best fit. It doesn't even have all the other stuff. Shows a running cost, um, use that to estimate your annual cost if you drove at 1500. So reading the appropriate scale measurement off your axes and then following these questions here. So that's that one there. Pause the video, have a go. All right, cool. So what we're also going to look at is algebraic predictions. And this is where you use substitution. So here we go. There's a casino, there's people playing in it. And they found this word here, regression, just means like, um, is there like a correlation between, so can the rep, um, the association, oh, so can the association between your two variables be represented by an equation? So these equations that we have, these things here, if you have a look at the video interpreting bivariate data, there's like certain parameters that, um, <clears throat> pardon me, that, <coughs> sorry, that allude to um, them being linear. So, that's why they have like this um, equation. So in the case of substitution, it's asking you in this case, determine the prize number when people, um, the number of people, sorry, we're looking for N. So we're looking for this value here. 
um, when the prize money is this amount. So in that case, the prize money is going to be P and it's going to be that value there. So to do A, you'd write your equation first as we would normally do with anything algebra related, uh, 220. Substitute the number that we know is in there. So I'm just going to highlight this P and this one N, uh, like the purple and yellow colors, just so that you can see what we're looking for. So we're looking for the number of people and the prize money was that amount. So remember there is invisible maths. There is like a little multiplication symbol between these two um, items, like or, sorry, between the number and the variable, like the words are coming blank to me. So that would be N equals 0 0.07 times whatever P is, so we're substituting that, remember P equals, um, sorry, I'm going to just put that up here, P equals 2,500, and I'll highlight that in yellow for you. Okay, times 2,500 plus the 220, and that again comes from there, and and then equals, so turn a quick squeeze in your calculator. So the prize amount, so it's in dollars. Oh, sorry, the number of people that need to play for the cash amount to be 2,500 needs to be three, three thousand, oh, sorry, 38,500 people. So to do B, hmm, So for B, we find that we have calculate the likely prize money. So that's what we're looking for, or prize offer. So that's what we've got to find. When there are 500 people, so that's our purple one there, 500 people for N. So then write your formula again, N equals 0 0.07P plus 220. This time, though, it's our um, number of people that we have. So that's 500 equals 0 07 P plus 220. Now you might be like, oh wait, I'm not too sure how to do that. There is algebraic processes involved in this and um, we might have to do a quick algebra video for just as a recap as well so it won't be covered in here. So then you would take this over. So opposite of adding is subtracting. Oh, it would help if I subtracted the right number. 220, so that would be then, um, I want to say 280, but I could be wrong. Yep. So 280 equals 0.07p. And then the opposite of multiplying by 7 is dividing by 7, uh, sorry, 0. 0 0.07 so we're going to divide by 0 0.07 and then that's going to give us p equals um, 280 divided by 0 0.07 which gives us four thousand dollars in prize money that needs um, that is likely to be on offer when there are 500 people playing so that's what you're essentially doing is making, substituting the numbers in like when when one variable equals this, what will happen to the other variable and then determining whether or not it's um, done so via algebra. And then when you do that, what you're essentially doing is like going, well, you're now making predictions with a mathematical model. So here we go. We've got some questions there for you from the book. So you would take this when F is dollars and um, D is the distance traveled. So here we go. If we just highlight the two variables for us, it makes it a lot easier to help substitute in. F is the fare and it says determine the charge in the fare, determine the fare, um, and then a fare of $27, a fare of that. Whereas if we have D, which is the D is the distance traveled, distance of that, distance of that, determine the distance, determine the distance. So what we can see is that the first two questions, determine the fair, these ones, are going to be like um, the first lot from the video. So A and B would be like these guys, A and B, and C and D would be like this where you... Um, 
bring one value over from the other to solve and solve for the value of p. Okay, so there you go. That's the first one kind of helpfully annotated for you. And then pausing that, you've got the second and oops, third there for you. Thanks a lot. Um, have a good one. Bye.